Hello everyone and welcome back to the coverage of the Magnus Invitational. We are continuing with our match uh, Magnus Carlsen versus Ding Liren and this is game 4 of their match. Uh, so two games were won, were won by Ding and one game uh, was won by Magnus so Ding is in the lead uh, and Magnus needs to win this one to get back into the match and force Armageddon. So without further ado let's see if we get surprised by yet another game and if you've seen the thumbnail I I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So Magnus goes for e4, we have e5 binding and here Magnus uh, brings out the big guns. He goes for the king's gambit, we have f4 and it's always exciting moment at least for me when, when uh, whenever uh, anyone plays the king's gambit and it's one of those gambits that is best uh, refuted by accepting it. So uh, this is exactly what Ding does, he goes for e captures on f4, accepts the king's gambit it and knight to f3. Now uh, just continuing development we have knight to f6 now immediately going after the e4 pawn and e5 by Magnus immediately advancing that pawn and now knight to h5. Ding knows his uh, king's gambit theory uh, the, the knight will be very useful here uh, guarding the f4 pawn. So queen to e2 by Magnus uh, and bishop to e7 now. Uh, we have d4, the uh, strengthening the center, uh, and now castles by Ding, and knight to c3 by Magnus. And here there is one game uh, in the database where d5 was played, but here d6 by Ding uh, is a new move, and already as of move 7 we have a completely new game. So it's, uh, it is kind of problematic for Magnus to develop the dark square bishop, since the knight on h5 guards this pawn, you can't just recapture it. So bishop to d2, uh, and now bishop to g4, and this will be, uh, this will be a, a difficult uh, task to, to break up this structure. How do you get rid of this pawn, how do you uh, move anything uh, since the bishop is now pinning the knight, uh, but that's why, uh, why Magnus decided to play the, uh, the king's gambit. So we have queenside castles uh, and knight to d7, putting more pressure on the center. So queen to e1, unpinning, preparing bishop to e2 to counter black slide square bishop and c6 now. Uh, we have bishop to e2 and then now comes rook to e8 and now Magnus uh, goes for g3 and it's a pretty common thing uh, in the king's gambit when the f4 pawn is protected you want to give up the g3 pawn and even the h2 pawn to create some attacking chances on the king's side uh, which you will see a lot when we continue our Morphe saga. So d captures on e5, uh, grabs in the center, we have knight captures on e5, now opens up an attack on the bishop, we have knight captures on e5, d captures on e5, and now f3. So by doing this, Ding has created a passed pawn on f3. Uh, but Magnus had to do something as there was really no way for him to start developing pieces. Bishop to d3, and now queen to d4, a beautiful centralizing move by the queen, also guards f2, uh, so this prepares f2 with an attack on the queen, and also this will open up an attack against uh, the rook uh, from the bishop on g4. So Magnus immediately goes queen e4, forces a queen trade, as now the bishop is under attack, but also the dh7 pawn. So Ding trades, we have queen captures, knight captures, and now f2, uh, saving his pawn while also uh, attacking the rook here. So rook d to f1, blocking the pass pawn, and now bishop to f3 by Ding. And now there is no way to save the rook, uh, you either give it up or you, you give up the exchange, that's pretty much uh, all you can do here, but Carlsen finds a way to make things interesting, he goes for g4, he tries to give up uh, the, the bishop, the pawn here so uh, the rook might survive, but Ding goes for the absolute strongest move, he goes bishop to h4, uh, he defends the pawn here uh, while giving up the knight here, uh, and uh, there's not much white can do here, uh, you're losing the exchange that's for sure, but at least you can, you can uh, win a piece while doing it. So this is what Ding goes for, we have g captures on h5 uh, and now not grabbing the rook right away, if you grab the rook right away then rook captures and after rook captures on e5 you just go back rook to f1 uh, and you keep uh, you keep playing this position uh, and uh, you you will have good, good defending chances. So instead of uh, grabbing the rook right away Ding first goes for rook captures on e5 which now creates a double attack on the knight here so immediately threatening to win back the piece uh, we have knight to g3 by Magnus, getting it uh, out of the way, and now just rook a to e8, putting a lot of pressure on this e1 square. And there's no rush to capture the rook, this rook is not going anywhere. So here Magnus played uh, bishop to c3, he created an attack here against the rook, but uh, it doesn't work. Uh, as here Ding just played, uh, well uh, there are a lot of moves that are good here, and here you can actually capture or you can just move the move the rook uh, from harm's, harm's way, but bishop g5 check is the most straightforward one. Here king to b1 was played 
and the Ding just played bishop captures on h1, and it was in this position on move 23 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game, which means that Ding wins the match 3 to 1, which is which is pretty incredible stuff. Uh, but yeah, as it, it didn't really matter for the standings, uh, Magnus uh, is uh, Magnus is in the playoffs in the top four, so he he decided to obviously have some fun and entertain everyone. Uh, while doing so. So here he resigned because uh, his position is lost, but uh, if he didn't resign, there is actually a, a, a good variation where where he could continue the game. For example, bishop captures on e5, rook captures on e5, and now bishop to e2. Of course, you cannot allow rook to e1 check, that's game over, so you have to block it. Uh, and after bishop to f3, now of course, again, you cannot capture because this just wins the game, so you have to play something else. And here, after this bishop to f3 move, uh, there is actually rook captures on f2, which uh, allows white to continue the game, and we basically trade down into this captures, captures, and let's say captures, captures, and you get this end game, which uh, in in the long run, Ding would of course win. It's uh, it's only uh, he's only up one pawn, but uh, Carlson's h pawn is a double pawn, and it's a bishop against a knight with play on both sides of the board. Uh, but uh, I think Magnus was uh, was uh, more disappointed with his game to, to even consider uh, finding a line that that may result in this position. Uh, so just after this uh, bishop captures on h1, uh, he decided to resign the game. So there we have it. Uh, Ding wins their match, uh, and we are continuing to check up uh, on some of the other matches. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to do so, uh, but uh, we, we definitely will. And then we're going to check out the standings, even though we already know who who is going into playoffs. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it. I don't think the King's Gambit is making a comeback, but uh, you know, you, uh, people might uh, might uh, play it here and there uh, to, to you know uh, have some fun. Uh, but yeah, I would like to thank uh, Colin Packard, uh, Thomas Valeri, Gabriel Tsedismondi, uh, uh, Saud Abdullah, and Christopher Levens for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the Magnus Invitational until it finishes. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.